uh, advisor, the meeting of the committee will be streamed live to the City of Adelaide website and a recording will also be published to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the Council, including transferring outside of Australia. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognize and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. And we also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Uh, members, in terms of apologies and leave of absence, I have two apologies, one from Councillor Ho and another one from Councillor Hyde. And Councillor Kira is uh, running slightly late. Um, uh, members, can I now uh, have a mover and a seconder to move that the minutes of the meeting of the committee held on uh, 1st of February 2022 be taken as read, confirmed and accurate recording uh, record of uh, proceedings, please? Uh, I've got Councillor Mackey, uh, second to Councillor Martin. Uh, Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak to that? Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to that? Um. Yes. Yeah, only to say that I, I tried to make an apology for Councillor Moran, but wasn't able to do so. Uh, okay, we have apologies from Councillor Moran as well. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, uh, are there any discussions on uh, the uh, confirmation of minutes? No. Uh, can I take that to a vote? All those in favour? All those against? And that is carried. Thank you. Uh, members, we have two items. Uh, uh, before us, two presentations, I should say. Um, uh, item 4.1, uh, Lot 14 Precinct Update and Upcoming Works. Uh, and uh, if I could ask Jeff Register to um, introduce our guests and this item, please. Um, good evening, uh, everybody. Um, particularly a welcome to uh, Colleen uh, McDonald and Heath Blacker from Re Renewal SA uh, this evening. Um, I believe from the property and planning team who are going to talk to us tonight about uh, the Lot 15 precinct development. Um, you'll be aware this is one of the state's flagship initiatives at the moment uh, with significant breach, particularly in terms of um, the public realm and City of Adelaide assets. Um, today's presentation will, will really be an update, I believe, on in terms of progress on site, and I guess some of the planned work ahead of us uh, over the next uh, next months to years. So I think um, generally movements around the site, pedestrian, cycling and traffic are uh, considerations at the moment, um, but also access issues, which you'll hear more about tonight through the presentation. I think some things to keep in mind tonight really are around the various touch points for the C of A assets, particularly around the perimeter locations and some of the amenity there. Um, also maintaining the connectivity, obviously, onto the streets and surrounding gardens. Um, so particularly environmental impacts um, and also sustainability of design are also considerations. And importantly, any sort of safety implications around uh, what, what's proposed ahead. So look, I'll hand over to Colleen and Heath for the presentation this evening. And I think there'll be opportunity following that for some, some questioning, obviously, and uh, we'll more move forward from there. So thank you, Colleen and Heath. Um, okay, thank you um, for the introduction and thank you for um, having us tonight to present um, the update on the Lot 14. We, we focus um, particularly on uh, traffic and movement in this presentation. Um, as per the introduction, we're seeking, sorry, I should say I'm Colleen McDonald intro. Um, I'm the manager of property and projects for the Lot 14 project. So I look after um, the design of buildings, public realm and all of our approvals. And um, Heath Blacker, who's with me tonight from Warbridge and Gilbert is the senior principal civil and traffic engineer. And he's helping me with this presentation and on the technical aspects of the traffic management strategy, which we're presenting to you. 
Um, I just have included this slide as a bit of context, a bit of a glossary, because we will be referring to, um, in particular, the gate. So gate nine, gate seven, um, are the historic names from when it was a hospital of those access points. There were 10 gates in all. Um, and the Bice Road is just a working name that we're using um, for the primary access out to North Terrace. So that's just really by way of context. I know you all know Lot 14. Um, the, um, yeah, thank you. So um, as per the introduction, we're seeking council's approval as the owner of From Road to undertake works to facilitate the traffic management strategy developed in response to the major projects being delivered at Lot 14. The traffic management strategy was developed in 2020 with several rounds of consultation with the City of Adelaide staff before being finalised in December 2020. Um, further orientation really is, just, is the Lot 14 Master Plan. We're going to go into a little bit more detail shortly around the key projects um, being Tarkery and the Entrepreneur and Innovation Centre, but this overall site vision um, which again, I think most of you are um, familiar with is just a summary of where we're at. So the five heritage buildings along From Road and North Terrace have been completed now, refurbished, and we're just about to resolve the last lease with the last tenant coming into the Vice Building, which is the one to the furthest to the east. Um, so we have around 1,300 tenants now occupying those five buildings, which is great. The, Eleanor Harold, which is not heritage listed, though looks like it um, further along Foam Road, is being refurbished at the moment as well. Um, and it will provide accommodation for about 500 more tenants on site. Um, as you can see, the Entrepreneur and Innovation Centre is due to start the middle of this year and completion in June 2024. And Tarkery, um, which is now under construction, is due to open in January 25. And then last but not least, the um, three and a half hectares of public realm is um, about half complete. So we've done the North Terrace works and now extending into the big park in the centre of the site. And part of that is the upgraded internal road network, which is my segue, I guess, into the um, presentation now on the traffic management strategy connected to those buildings. Um, the specific request from us tonight is um, that we're seeking to do some relatively minor works to gate seven and nine, um, which includes alterations to the pavement and lighting. Um, but more significantly, it requires the removal of two London plane trees, one from each of the gates, gate one from gate seven, one from gate nine. Um, and as most of you will be aware, London plane trees are exempt species under the Planning, Development and Infrastructure Act. So a development application won't be required, notwithstanding that um, this presentation tonight is just to explain to elected members um, the purpose for this request. Um, I'm going to hand over to Heath just to explain um, the site-wide traffic management strategy. Thanks, Colleen. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, sorry, back one. I apologise. Um, so it was a the low speed environment is within lot 14. So we've been working with City of Adelaide staff and DIT staff, the Department for Transport, are the, I guess the governing authority with speed limits. So we're going to set a speed limit in the site. We need to engage with them early. So looking at a 20 to 30 kilometre posted speed limit through within lot 14. So trying to have that low speed environment. And then that's the aim is there to enhance sort of pedestrian and cyclist safety through the through this precinct. Um, in terms of the site itself, there will be needs to, for the site to have deliveries, for waste to be collected, um, for emergency service access. So through that development, we were predicting, uh, estimating in the order of up to 100 hit commercial vehicles. Those commercial vehicles will vary in size, um, but that's sort of the order of, of magnitude of the, the heavy vehicles that will access the site. Um, going through the, the original site, we felt Frome Road was a good opportunity for um, access to the site in particular gate seven. Gate seven is currently signalised. 
It provides full access, so right turn ins and right turn outs. Um, and it's fairly central as well, so it provides a, uh, an opportunity to get within sort of all the buildings from a central position. So that sort of drove why we felt gate seven or the signalised access on Frome Road was a was a good opportunity to access the site. Um, and, and there was basically predominantly smaller trucks, but there may be need for occasional semi-trailers as well as buses, uh, school buses and things access the site, particularly for the Tarkari uh, site. So. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is just by way of update. Um, the staff, council staff in particular, have asked me just to address the changes from the 2018 master plan to uh, where we're at now. In 2018, um, you can see that solid black line was um, a suggested in and out for uh, vehicles entering the public car park. That um, relied on accessing University of Adelaide land, um, which wasn't supported. So the, the access for the public car park will remain as it is. And you can see that on that second slide, the current proposal where vehicles can go in and out from gate seven and gate nine and around to the east into the car park. And then that slide also just shows the balance of the movement through the site um, as per the traffic management uh, strategy. Um, and just a bit more context, I guess, around pedestrianisation and the emphasis on cyclists. So the slide to the left shows the vehicle path. The orange is um, the primary vehicle movement. So in and back out to Frome and around to the car park. And the red is kind of the lesser used primarily for trucks. Um, and then the one on the right is really just showing the the strong pedestrian and cycle paths. So the orangey colour on the second slide over is the Parklands Trail. So uh, we've been working with staff around delivering the Parklands Trail through Lot 14, which I know is um, of interest to some of your residents who we've met with several times. Um, and we're really excited about that opportunity as it comes along the western side of Taukari. And um, we've got many bike parks going in along that path um, at the back of Taukari and connecting to the cafe and, and through into the pedestrians. So, um, yeah, just highlighting, I guess, the, the focus not being on vehicles, very much being on pedestrians and cyclists. Thank you, Jenny. These slides here. Yeah, I guess try to explain so the, the thinking around the road, internal road network of Lot 14. Um, fundamentally, it'll be a, a flush sort of uh, area, but we still provide a distinct area for vehicles and a distinct area for pedestrians. Um, they will be done with paving, uh, landscaping, hard landscaping, uh, trees, things like that. So that's sort of the, the environment we're looking to provide. Um, so the next slide too provides a few pictures, um, of sort of some examples that. Um, provide that feel of what we're trying to achieve out here. And, and again, trying to provide that low speed environment, but still provide that uh, vehicular access through the site. Uh, next slide, please. And just briefly then touching on the major projects. So the Entrepreneur and Innovation Centre was approved in February 2021. Um, it was a referral to the City of Adelaide with a focus on pedestrian vehicle movements to and around the building. and. And more recently, uh, since February 21, we have a variation approved to that application, which shifts the basement ramp to the western side of that building. What that does is the, um, the road that runs along the full northern extent of the Entrepreneur and Innovation Centre can therefore be, again, a pedestrian-focused, cycle-focused road with very limited um, vehicle movement along that path, the majority would go into the building from the west. Um, next slide, please, Jenny. There's just some details here about, I guess, the specifics of the site itself in terms of there's 55 staff car parks that have been uh, provided as part of this 300 bike parks. Um, the, there's a 8.8 uh, .8 long truck, there's a garbage truck effectively that will come into the site and down into a basement area and that will be for deliveries as well as waste collection. Um, there's inter-trip facilities and every all the waste collections and deliveries are um, in, within the basement of this facility. Oh, next slide please. 
um, the, I can't show you with a pointer, but this does show that Western um, entry along, so the EIC Northern Promenade, the Western side, that sort of white solid thing is the, is the ramp down to the basement. So that Northern Promenade therefore becomes that sort of pedestrian and cycle emphasis that I mentioned before. Um, this is a key part of the public realm at Lot 14, so it's a, a, a very large, it's about 1,500 square metre permeable, two-level uh, open void. So it takes people through from North Terrace, through a plaza, in through the building, one in 20 grade and through to the park and beyond, um, which, yeah, we think is, a you know, again, um, a key emphasis or or prioritisation of pedestrians within Lot 14. Um, next slide. Um, on to Tarkery. So um, Tarkery was approved by SCAP in October. Um, once again, we had a bit of exchange um, with council staff in particular around vehicle access and making sure that um, the Parklands Trail could be safely accommodated and stormwater was adequately dealt with. There's a small loading bay approach um, for this building, but it will also rely on that vice road um, that I mentioned before for occasional art loading, um, really just um, in an attempt to minimise the amount of, of large basement required. Next slide. So again, just going into a bit more detail around the Takari uh, building. Um, so there's a basement parking again uh, uh, for, for loading and for for waste. Um, this one's slightly bigger than the EIC in that they're, they're getting a larger vehicle in. It's a 12 and a half metre long rigid, which is the longest legal rigid vehicle that's allowed on the roads. So that uh, it gets access to the basement as well. Um, part of this development, there's also um, ex expectation or allowance for buses, so school buses, coaches to uh, drop off on Bice Road. And as part of that, um, very occasionally, if a semi trailer needed to get access in with something like quite large for an exhibition, that can actually come through and then leave by North Terrace. The other 12 and a half metre truck and 8.8 .8 truck uh, will head back to Frome Road um, as part of that. Um, the buses itself, we did work with um, uh, DIT, the bus um, part of DIT, as well as City of Adelaide, and arranged to have a drop off and pick up on North Terrace. Um, that's sort of at the start of the, uh, the bus lane there. The DIT bus people are okay for us to use that for, for private use. It's just that they want it clear for morning peak hour and afternoon peak hour. So in those during the week, in those times, if buses wanted to come, they can drop off on Bice Road instead. But predominantly looking to drop buses off on uh, people from buses on North Terrace. Uh, next slide, thank you. And just before we go on to the specifics of the request of council for the Frome Road Works, this just to summarise everything that we've spoken about so far. So the locations of the two major project um, basements, um, their access, the one way, two way with the emphasis on minimising um, vehicles and trucks in particular coming through behind the Innovation Centre to Bice Road, turning as many vehicles as, as those as we can back out to Frome Road um, and the, the predominance of pedestrian focus, which is those blue arrows. Um, and now Heath will just present the specifics of the request um, to the works on Frome Road. Uh, next slide, thank you. So this is really starting now. We've identified Gate 7 as being a, an opportunity there because of the signalised, because of its uh, full access. From our review, we did initially, um, the, there's two sort of items we, we raised in your SA. One was the sight line issues that that tree creates. So for, a, I guess, a critical item we look at is a pedestrian vehicle conflict. Um, and for a crossing, um, sight lines are obviously quite important. The tree itself um, can, can obscure a person on that crossing for someone turning in. So we raised that with a renewal SA as a safety risk um, and, and working through that. The other item, oh, next slide, please. Apart from the safety risk or the sight line restrictions, uh, this just goes a few photos as well through the tree um, location, if that, um, just pointing out the location of the tree with respect to gate seven. Uh, next slide, please, thank you. Um, so the other item we obviously looked at is the turn pass uh, for heavy vehicles to get in and out of via gate seven. Um, so the critical vehicle to get in that is restricted by the trees. It's a 12 and a half metre long 
uh, rigid truck. So that's the, the bus size and the uh, 12 and a half to go to the Dakari um, facility. So we looked at, you know, trying to do a right turn in and not a left turn in, because then that's sometimes a bit easier. Uh, but even with trying to facilitate that, we were still impacting the tree. So it was a sight line issue as well as the, the vehicle access for the 12 and a half metre vehicle to get access to the site was being restricted by that tree. Um, thank you. Uh, so whilst we looked at gate seven, we also looked at gate nine. Um, we have been sort of talking with City of Adelaide staff regarding the north-south bikeway. Um, currently, the, the width of Frome Road is slightly narrower at Gate 9 than it is at Gate 7. There's not enough width for a right turn lane. The proposal of, for Frome Road is the, the north-south bikeway, which takes out a lane of through traffic and converts that to a wider bike way. Um, by doing that, there is an opportunity then to put a right turn lane in. So we looked at that as well as the, the sight line safety issues, again, with Gate 9 in that you've got a tree in the middle of a pedestrian crossing that can obstruct sight lines uh, for vehicles to cars and people to cars. So we looked at that as being a potential option. Um, it's a longer term option, but we felt that was a, another a benefit from a traffic point of view and a safety point of view. Having an extra right turn into Gate 9 uh, assist the site with uh, providing uh, further redundancy. So if something goes wrong with gate seven and becomes blocked, there's opportunities to access uh, from the south to gate nine. Uh, we feel there's also an opportunity to provide a pedestrian crossing. So you've got the Frome Road, uh, sorry, the Frome Trail coming through to the university. Um, you could actually incorporate a pedestrian crossing as part of that. So there's, I guess there were seen as some benefits in, in upgrading this intersection and I guess the north-south bikeway provide that opportunity. So we had a look at that as well. Uh, next slide, thank you. Um, these are a few photos of the uh, gate nine access as well, just for reference. And that's the tree we're talking about. Um, so this is going further into what I just spoke about with a dedicated right turn. Um, that's for a light vehicle. So that's just a passenger vehicle turning right into the side. It just was, it doesn't work with the, with the tree there. Um, and that also incorporates the, the, the bike way heading north out of the city um, and showing the one lane of frame through and then an opportunity to put a right turn lane in within the width of frame road there now. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is the last slide. So this is just really summarising everything that we've spoken about um, and it just adds the timing. So uh, we'd be looking to do the Gate 7 works in um, the middle of this year. Gate 9 um, is the longer term um, and that would be sort of 2023 and beyond. Um, and that's all from us. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, members, I see uh, Lord Mayor, um, you've got your hand up. I'll just unmute. Thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, just so that I understand, so all bus entry that will go through to BICE is from Frome with the exit onto North Terrace. Is that correct? Yes, we've, with bought buses, we think will be, because we negotiated with the DIT uh, bus division, uh, outside the peak times, and they, those times from memory are 7.30 to 9.30 in the morning, I think about 4.30 to 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the evening, um, buses, uh, we can't use the North Terrace, but outside those times, so generally school times, things like that, weekends, buses can drop off on North Terrace. So the North Terrace would be trying to be promote as being the major or main drop off of buses, but it still provides opportunity during those peak times that buses still, still can come in and access okay. and drop off. So, so in terms of, um, just so that I'm clear, so there's no concern about buses exiting into North Terrace from Vice Road? No, we looked at the term pass for that. It's fairly yep. open through that. Um, so, no, we don't have an issue okay. um, concerns with that. Um, I, I've got a couple of questions. One is, um, have you reviewed it um, in the context of the school expansion, which is next door, and the traffic that's going to be happening up and down Frome Road uh, with school drop-offs? I know that the extension is going to accommodate 700 new students, so that's a lot of traffic, both in terms of vehicle and cycling traffic. Uh, that, that is, yeah, I guess, fairly recent. We've looked at this on the basis of the Frome Road master plan with the bikeways and try to obviously accommodate the future of the Frome Road with the bikeway in both directions. 
um, and having those accesses work in relation to where they are now as well as the future for Frome Road. We, there hasn't been analysis for us in terms of the additional traffic generated by the school on Frome Road. Okay. And um, and also, has there been any thought given to uh, tree replacement for the for those uh, rather substantial trees that are going that you are looking to remove? Yeah, I would um, just say that we would be happy to do that. Um, Oxygen are our landscape architects, and um, they're not here, so I'm kind of speaking on James Hayter's behalf. But um, his, his advice to me was that the canopies, the, the size of the trees and the spacing is such that the canopies would quickly actually close um, with those trees removed. But yeah, we'd be more than happy as part of the works that we're doing just minor works like lighting and line marking to the intersections to add additional trees. Um, thank you. I'll probably, I'll leave my other questions till after the other members have had a chance. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor Snape. Um, thank you, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, and, and thank you uh, to our uh, um, to our wonderful staff members for our presentation. That's uh, very informative. Um, I do. I, I, I first of all, I welcome the uh, pedestrianisation, the cycling infrastructure. That is uh, is, is great to see, and I, I strongly support that. But obviously, my my concerns do lie around uh, the two quite significant trees that have been removed. Um, reminding my fellow members that um, in just 2019, we had 11 uh, significant trees removed from along North Terrace for this project. So we're now adding more scalps, so to speak, to, to the project. These trees, you know, we can plant uh, saplings, we can even plant semi-mature trees. They take, you know, 50 to 100 years to get to the size of which we're talking. So to replace them is not, is not uh, an easy task. So my question, I guess, is, have we exhausted all efforts and all attempts to, to not have to do this? Or is this just kind of the easiest of, of, the, of many options? And I can yeah, speak. So uh, thank you, Carcassonne Snape. Um, so the vehicles, I guess, there's a, a size that we physically trying to get into the site. Um, we felt Frame Road was the best spot to get them in. Um, North Terrace, I guess, is there's a lot of pedestrians out there at the moment. Um, uh, there's a tram stop, there's a fairly uh, a pedestrian activity. And whilst that's obviously the school children walking through, we're trying, we felt that, that Frame Road signalised access, the signals in particular provided a good access point, but just trying to get physically these larger vehicles into the site to facilitate the buildings on site, it was physically just not possible to get those trucks in safely without those trees. It's just, it was just too tight. Um, we have looked at other opportunities and we've tried to limit it, but we felt that this is the best outcome. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Connell? Okay. Just, um, my, look, my comments are not so much about internally because, I mean, obviously you've gone through all of that, but my main issues are that we've got a 1,400 car park in there. Um, you've only got two entries. Um, not knowing exactly how uh, the, the RIH worked before, but it looks like all the traffic is coming in through Chrome Road. Um, and noting that you have 300 bikes, uh, uh, park, parking for bikes, et cetera, how does that now impact on the actual, uh, uh, on the, on the uh, access through Chrome Road, et cetera, as against previously with RIH, with how that was? Um, because it looks like there's a lot of space for cars and um, that need to access but only a couple of options, and how will that impact on the uh, on the road infrastructure around and the congestion and things like that? Um, you know, given that you've already had made a few assumptions, how people are going to get to um, you know the lot fourteen? Um, how what impact will that have on the overall city traffic? Um, I'll just comment on the car park. So um, there is, as you said, the fourteen hundred space car park which is not at capacity at the moment. So some existing um, health staff actually um, move up and back from there from the new RA. Um, so, but the access has not changed. So when that car park was operating 
at capacity when the hospital was in operation. The entry was from gate seven and nine, which is not changed. So we're not proposing um, that that would change. I guess the only thing over time is that as the projects grow, that the car park may become at capacity again. So yeah, it's actually operating um, quite below capacity at the moment with the closure of the hospital. Yes, yeah, so no change to accesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it can accommodate those numbers. Um, uh, given that you know the, the people working in, in there are, are, are significantly different from those that were work in the in the shifts, etc., from the hospital. That was that was my, con my concern mm -hmm. around the peak hours. Yeah. And I imagine over time, I think there's about 400 spaces that are still available to the SA Health staff that over time um, they, they'll move to parking within the West. Mm. Yeah. So I hope you've done modelling around this, I take it, uh, with, with, the, with the expected workforce that you have, or what you, you anticipate yes. to, to uh, um, use the site. Yes, yeah, so the traffic numbers we're not predicting to be too much different. The, the car park itself will be the same size. Uh, the EIC has got an extra 55 car parks, but we're not envisaging other developments to have their own individual car parks to add to that 1,400 um, through there. Okay. So similar, similar traffic vibes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Uh, Councillor Mackey? Uh, thank you, Chair, and um, uh, Colleen and Heath, thanks very much for this presentation and for the slides that um, uh, were provided in our papers. Um, they are quite helpful. But I, I would like to flag, uh, I imagine there may be other fellow councillors who would very much appreciate this as well, the benefit before this comes to uh, council in March uh, for a site visit um, this is, at, at least in my uh, 20 or so months um, uh, on this council, this is the first opportunity uh, we have had uh, as, a, as a body of councillors uh, to, to look at um, uh, Lot 14. It's very exciting. I'm, I'm certainly a, a supporter of it. A, a couple of um, questions. I, I note that the City of Adelaide administration have chosen in the uh, context of this report, only to focus and comment on uh, traffic and management issues. Um, through you, Chair, just a question to the CE. Has there been opportunity for the City of Adelaide's planners and design um, people uh, to provide input or participate in um, other aspects of integrated design um, uh, realisation for this campus? Thank you. Thank you, CEO. Uh, thank you, through the chair. Um, yes, uh, City of Adelaide uh, staff have been um, involved um, for a number of years now. Um, so, for example, um, in terms of uh, any of the public realm infrastructure, there is a group that meets and we have a senior representative on that body, um, also representation on um, other elements associated with the site. Uh, um, thank you, C. And th uh, through you, Chair, just a couple of other uh, questions. Um, uh, and then I, I would be grateful for some feedback on the prospect of a, of a site visit, a, a, a guide site visit. Um, uh, in the papers, it, it refers to the 1,300 existing tenants in the heritage buildings, uh, additional 500 that are expected to occupy Eleanor Harold building when it's completed. And um, the, um, uh, the the new uh, Entrepreneur and Innovation Centre, just remind me what the estimated uh, holding capacity in terms of, of, of workers is in, in that. And then I, and I'll ask my question um, as well. Um, so there are 300 bike paths, uh, bike, bike, bike parks, um, that have been I, I re recommend or, or referred to in this is that the totality of bike parking capacity for this entire uh, campus going forward? Um, I'll answer that for you. It's um, so the three hundred parks is the number that 
is derived from this the Green Star ratings tool. So that building itself is going to be aiming for a six star green star rating and to achieve that they need to provide 300 bike parks so those parks are specific to the workers within that building the the public realm um, in and around the entrepreneur and innovation center has additional bike parking so the site also has a, a six star green star communities rating so we have bike parks dotted throughout the precinct um, and I've recently set up about 95 parks within the multi-deck car park, but bike parks that is. So we've also got additional capacity for staff within the heritage buildings to park in the multi-deck car park. Um, Tarkari has about 30, I think it's got eight staff parks because the staff numbers are obviously much lower with the, the nature of that building and about 30 visitor parks which I mentioned in my presentation are along that parklands trail so there is a there's a there's a lot of <laughs> bike parking um I think we're up to what in just that count that I've done we're up to about 450 or so bike parks thank you thanks very much again through you, Chair. Thanks, Colleen. Um, related question then, given that, you know, in, in the same way as the Lord Mayor has highlighted uh, uh, the, the question about the anticipated additional uh, um, demand um, of people movements, vehicle movements, um, uh, bicycle movements related to the expansion of the Adelaide Botanic High School. Um, when Tarkery comes on board, it's not only uh, noting that it's not only the uh, employees uh, who will be occupying that place, but an estimated some 700,000 visitors per year. Um, mm -hmm. What uh, consideration are you aware of that's being given to the likely potential for um, uh, that uh, that that demand both in in terms of um bicycle parking uh, uh but also in relation to the the general level of, of vehicular uh in demand that will come to that quadrant uh mm -hmm. as a result of of the advent of tarkery yeah um i can answer that so because uh, i was also involved in the planning application for tarkery and um as you may know the um, innovation zone for which relates to lot 14 in the planning code has a requirement for no car parking to be provided on site. So at the time of the assessment of that code amendment, well, it wasn't a code amendment initially, but the DPA um, was that the multi-deck car park at 1400 spaces would more than adequately um, accommodate the amount of parking required. So in the planning application for Tarkery, um, in the assessment of car parking, it was, um, well, all of the public transport options, the Parklands Trail, where the parking, the coach loading on North Terrace were described, and then should the need arise, then there's obviously public um, parking, both in the multi-deck car park, but other car parking around the city. Thank you, thank you, and just um, through you again, Chair. My, my just my final observation: um, the the notion of traffic calmed to um, uh, twenty to thirty kilometres an hour in this uh, uh, very important, very busy, and very green precinct um, is something to um, be celebrated. And uh, I, I absolutely look forward to seeing how the interface between uh, pedestrians and, and motor vehicle movements um, uh, is, it, it is experienced uh, by, by the users of that campus because it, it may in fact hold a, a clue to calming potential in certain other villages of our city of Adelaide uh, or our precincts as we also call them. Thanks very much Chair. Thank you. Um, Councillor Maker, did you have a uh, question about the number of uh, tenants in the Entrepreneurial Centre? Uh, uh, the number, uh, uh, am I, am I, yep, yeah, um, the- We can uh, hear you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, the number of um, workers who are, are expected to be accommodated in the Entrepreneur, uh, Innovation and Entrepreneur Centre. 
um, I don't have the exact number, but I think it's two and a half thousand. We've got an ultimate number modelled of six thousand um, visitors per day, which includes the to the cultural um, facilities plus uh, the commercial spaces. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That so we're really talking about a very, very, very people busy uh, part of the city, probably busier than in its heyday as the Royal Adelaide Hospital. Um, so it makes it very, very important that we are managing the interface between uh, motor vehicles and uh, pedestrians and cyclists. Uh, very, very sensitively. Um, a question that I don't expect um, you to know, although Colleen, given your close involvement with uh, Tarkery over a period of time um, through you, Chair, the, um, has, there, has the interface between Tarkery and Lot 14 and the Adelaide Botanic Garden Western uh, uh, sort of a, 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 a adjacency, has that been resolved from a design perspective as yet? Um, I could give you a whole presentation on that oh, well, <laughs> very well, well, exciting well, well, project. <laughs> um, we are working incredibly closely with the Botanic Gardens and the Tarkery team and um, the Lot 14 team, and it's coming along really well. So um, there's not a lot that I can reveal right now, but let's just say we've got... Um, there's a lot of design work that's gone on to basically um, facilitate that integration that we've all been seeking for so long. Levels, um, consistent levels between the Botanic Gardens and Tarkery. Um, you know, just a great experience basically as you enter Tarkery and, and similarly as you enter into the Botanic Gardens. So, yeah, it's something that we um, have been working quite hard on and it's still a couple of years away from being delivered given the the length of construction of Tarkery but it's definitely a high priority. Thank you. Well, um, through you, Chair, I, I might bookmark uh, with you, Colleen, a chance <laughs> um, a bit of a one-to-one -one and for any other council mm -hmm. colleagues who, who are interested because this is absolutely um, uh, one of the most exciting and important uh, developments uh, within the City of Adelaide and there are others of course but um, I'm particularly interested in this uh, and just for my council colleagues I was brought in uh, in 20 the end of 2015 as the interim director at the Botanic Gardens in order to help facilitate the dialogue uh, between the interests of, of um, the Botanic Gardens and the Department of Environment and um, the what was called then ENRA, uh, 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 sorry, ORA, the old Royal Adelaide, it's now called Lot 14. Um, so uh, it's, it is incredibly important and incredibly exciting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Um, members, are there any other questions? I do not see any hands up, so I think that will be the end of that. And I, I agree with you, Councillor Mackey. I think the East End traders will be very excited to see this project completed um, and see that amount of traffic return back to the East End. Um, uh, on that note, thank you, Heath and Colleen from uh, Renewal SA. Uh, we will move on to item 4.2, which is uh, West Franklin Stage 2 Project Update. And I believe we have uh, Sean and Rachel with us tonight. Thank you and through you, Chair. Thank you, members. Um, I will take some of the presentation as read. Um, however, I will briefly touch on some key items. So um, first up, if we could just jump straight to slide six, please. Yep, just, sorry. Um, try page 26, so go back to the plan. Thanks, Jenny, back one. Yep, stop there, thank you. Um, the plan shown is an aerial of the uh, entire Balfour's development or the um, West Franklin development site, if you like. Uh, so in 2015, council provided vendor approval to the West Franklin stage one. And that's in the bottom left of the plan on screen and that development is now complete. Um, Grayton is the owner and developer of the land formerly known as the Loft Land. 
Um, this is an area that's of the key focus of the presentation and shown at the bottom centre most of the land on the screen in green. Greaton and the City of Adelaide are parties to um, outstanding obligations within the development deed that relate to the red brick building on the corner of Morfitt Street and Franklin Street in the right of uh, the plan on screen, as well as a land management agreement or LMA, uh, which relates specifically to the former loft land um, mentioned again, just the centre um, lower green box on, on that plan. So the purpose of this presentation is to provide council with an update on the matter and seek council members' feedbacks to um, Grant's proposal in the context of the LMA. So if we just go to the next slide, thank you. Just really briefly, in relation to the Balfour's corner site, so Graydon has uh, contractual obligations to redevelop the site in accordance with the development deed and not the LMA. Um, so it should be clear that that area is not um, part of the LMA. If we just move to the next slide, thank you. Beautiful. Um, as flagged earlier, the loft land or West Flank from stage two is the subject of the LMA. So as per the points on the screen, the LMA states that the development must comply with development criteria, which includes two levels of car parking, pedestrian links, and that those links must be common property, and that the maximum building heights as outlined on the concept plan and prescribed in the Adelaide development plan are achieved within a 20% tolerance. At the time the LMA was drafted, the concept plan and the development plan maximum heights were the same, being 25 metres. Building heights were amended in 2012 as part of the Capital City Development Plan Amendment, which was initiated by state government. This increased the maximum height in the Adelaide Development Plan to 53 metres. That has resulted in a variation between the heights defined in the language of the LMA. Again, just that last point on screen, that's where the the variation occurs. we we'll just get to the next slide. Thank you. So just by the way, um, the current status of the development is that it was considered by SCAP on the 10th of March uh, 21 and they refused the development. That refusal was successfully appealed by the developer. The ID court uh, issued planning approval on the 13th of September 2021. Just go to the next slide for us, thanks. So following the ERD court's decision, Grayton has written to council advising the outcome of those proceedings. Uh, Grayton has informed council that their position is that the development now complies with the LMA. That position is based on the comments made by the judge during the ERD court proceedings. And those comments are available on the screen there and in slide, it was now slide eight. My numbers must be wrong, I apologize, Jenny. Um, so it's important to note that this position is not a legal judgment on the interpretation or the application of the terms of the LMA and that the words that are um, presented on that screen there are um, an expressed essence of the comments made um, from Grayton to um, council. So it's not verbatim what the judge said and it isn't um, a legal judgment on the matters contained in the LMA. Um, so the following slides, um, of the presentation uh, really containing the particulars of the development and some concepts. So um, what I may do is take those as read and just continue through to the last slide. Thanks, um, Jenny. There we are, thank you. Um, so really given the development's position is that they comply with the LMA. Um, they don't intend to ask council or we understand that they don't intend to ask council to waive or vary the development criteria within the LMA. So to facilitate the next steps, a report will be brought back to council in April to provide the opportunity for council to resolve its position and for administration to progress the matter further. Um, given the party isn't planning on coming to us, um, it's really upon council to um, decide what the next steps will be. And that would be done through the report in April um, as presented. Um, so that's really it from me. I'm happy to pass back to you, Chair, and for any further questions. Thanks, Sean. Uh, uh, Councillor Connell, followed by Councillor Mackey. Okay, thank you. I mean, uh, uh, Councillor Mackey was first, but you know. Uh, I've got you on, on, on top, so I, I, sorry, sorry I, I didn't know who put up there. Right, it's a screen problem. <laughs> Look, um, uh, given that from the notes, etc., given that we don't have to accept the interpretation, uh, were we uh, present uh, uh, during, uh, you know, uh, their appeal, or and did and did we have any uh, uh, any opportunity to uh, to defend the, ter the terms of the LMA, or does or didn't it matter? Sure. 
Thank you and through the chair. So the proceedings um, were around planning approval. Uh, so it's my understanding that that is separate to the application of the LMA. Um, I think if you look in the presentation, there's a history of what we anticipated would occur, um, which was that really they would seek and gain um, planning approval and then return to council to contemplate um, any variations required in the LMA and um, I guess put forward their interpretations, et cetera, for us to, to contemplate. Um, that's changed and um, so effectively that planning approval has been provided. However, that doesn't uh, relate directly to the interpretation or application of the LMA. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and from that, you also say that uh, SCAP is waiting for us, uh, you know, a response from us before taking action. What influence does this other uh, uh, um, appeal and that have in that, uh, in this uh, deliberation with them? Sean? Thank you, through the chair. Um, so, uh, SCAP is not uh, waiting for feedback from, from council um, in that regard. So, um, the ERD decision was um, provided the planning consent. Um, so that's um, or planning approval. Uh, so that is where um, my understanding is that, um, that that's the end of it from SCAP's perspective. And now it is um, around councils um, dealing with the LMA with the developer. Mm -hmm. So just with that, I mean, uh, I mean, this, this LMA was about ensuring the value, et cetera, uh, and the certainty uh, for the uh, the purchases of the various apartments and the, the buildings and such. So, um, and that is what uh, uh, what our LMA supports. Um, you know, uh, so we can we rely on on this LMA for, uh, to be able to to uh, you know support the, that uh, their uh, you know their purchasing choice, or uh, is this in question? Sure. Through the chair, um, Councillor, I probably have to take that um, on notice. It's probably a fairly detailed response given um, the position and um, that would certainly be something that we can provide information to Council on uh, to inform any decisions at the meeting in April. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Uh, Councillor Mackey. Yeah, thank you, Chair, and, and thanks, Sean, for, for the presentation and um, the excellent slides, which uh, were very, very uh, good to read uh, before the meeting and to understand. Uh, first question, uh, and it, it may be uh, more to uh, the CE uh, Chair uh, rather than Sean, is uh, noting that it says a confidential report to Council is proposed. This briefing, uh, this agenda paper is not confidential. Uh, and can I just have that confirmed? Yes, CEO. <laughs> Thank you, through the chair. Um, when, when this report was published, obviously it's a public document. And I just, just did just say to the team earlier this afternoon when we were reviewing it and talking about it tonight that, oh, you've already made a presumption that the report coming back in April is in confidence. And I said, as you know, um, we are under strict direction from our council to try and do as much in public as possible. And noting the huge community um, interest in this, um, in that area, um, I think that, that there's two things. One is um, clearly there's going to need to be a strategy developed about how best council responds. Some of that may or may not be best shared publicly, but then um, any report that comes in, um, my hope is that it is in public. Um, Thank you, uh, CEO. Yeah, thank you, um, uh, Chair, and thank you, CEO. Um, uh, I, I will resist the temptation because I understand the rules of engagement in committee is, is not to debate, and there isn't a proposition here for us to debate, but mindful that um, council was unanimous in its uh, position, which it f uh, provided feedback to SCAP uh, uh, that led to their initial um, uh, refusal of this development. Um, uh, and, and that therefore prospective apartment investors do very clearly need to be very, very careful and wary of snake oil salesmen who interpreted the uh, LMA as imposing a maximum uh, in terms of development in their sight lines um, uh, um, elsewhere in the, in the complex. Um, and so my question, uh, uh, framing this as a question, um, are there opportunities, and I understand this will come back to us in April, but for council, as council, 
to uh, participate in appeal of, of this decision because we have hundreds uh, of residents, um, uh, somewhat less of, of, of actual individual, individual rateable entities who will righteously be outraged uh, by the impact of this uh, development approval on their, the, the enjoyment of um, uh, sight lines and more particularly natural light um, uh, in, um, in relation to the investments that they've made uh, and of which they're very proud. Thank you. Sean? Through the Chair, um, I think consistent with the comments of um, Claire, the item that we'll bring back to Council will discuss, I guess, uh, the strategy associated with taking the item forward to which some of your comments um, in the question uh, relate to what that strategy may well be amongst other items. So um, uh, short of that, I think the answer will be um, additional information provided in April to Council. Uh, thank you, Sean, for being there. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Martin. Um, yes. In relation uh, to the options open to Council, am I to understand that the advice which the administration says will be confidential, but which the CEO says might not be confidential, will include legal advice on ways in which we might be able to exert any influence over this or might not be able to? Sean? Through the chair, yes. And is that information sufficiently sensitive that you contend it needs to be heard in confidence? Sean? Through the chair, um, without that information in front of us, we couldn't make that judgment, but um, consistent with Claire's comments would be that we would make it as public as, as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and, and am I to understand that you don't have that legal advice to hand yet? You're still waiting on it? Sean? Uh, apologies there, sorry. Uh, through the chair, could I just get you to repeat that question, Council Minor, and just have um, a slight yes. break up there? Yeah, that's all right. Um, am I to understand that you do not have that legal advice to hand that you are still waiting for it? So through the chair, um, the best way to answer that is that um, not in a complete form, that would be uh, enabling us to present all of the information and the strategy and options through to council at this moment, um, which is why we're proposing that we um, gain that information and return to council in April. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, members, are there any other questions? Is there any feedback? I don't see any hands up. Um, I do have uh, a couple of questions if I can, Sean. Um, uh, uh, and, and it might be a bit premature at this stage, but I guess my first question is, what, what does this mean for Council's other LMAs that we have in place? Through the chair, so there are um, other LMAs that council are party to, um, and each of those would um, need to be assessed, I guess, on their own merits as to what any um, impacts would be, noting that really this is about developing a strategy to return to council um, to discuss what they may be. Um, we can certainly um, provide further information um, uh, at the time around any other implications around other LMAs. Okay. Um, so I guess... And, and this this might be something that might be covered in in that report. But one of the things that I'd be interested in uh, is seeing whether if this particular case um, would uh, set a precedent or or or, or a norm, um, given that we do have other LMAs on other sites throughout the city. Um, so would that be something that would that we would be briefed on, or is that something that we would um, get some information on? Three J, yes. Yeah. And also just one more quick question about the, the LMA itself. Um, uh, will the actual LMA come in that report in April as well? Three Chair, um, I don't believe that there would be anything um, that would stop us from doing that, so um, yes. Okay. Uh, I've got no further questions. I don't see any other hands up. Um, 
members, if there are no other questions, thank you, Sean. Uh, members, your you probably would have been made aware earlier this afternoon that items 4.3 and item 4.4 were withdrawn. Uh, so uh, given that we've got uh, no other items on the agenda, uh, it is 6.31 p.m. Uh, I will close that meeting. Um, have a good evening. <laughs>